Hello everyone, this is Roxas1359, welcome back to Let's Play Wario World. Last time, we finished up the first area of the game by defeating Dino Mighty and unlocked the token horror area of the game. So, in this episode, we're going to start off by going to our first place in Spooktastic World. Welcome to Horror Manor with no booze in sight. And, because it's a new area, the enemies change. That's one thing I really like about this game is that they actually have enemies reflect the specific levels of the game, which is fun. But, Spriteling right here. You gotta beat the big bone fist up ahead or you can't move on. That thing is bad. Well, okay, if you say so. If you watch carefully though, it'll reveal its weak point directly after its slam attack. You know, that seems to be a problem with a lot of bosses and enemies in games. They reveal their obvious weak points. And... Ah! No, let me go. Bad big bone fist. You get a butt slam. I don't like being grabbed. Here. Goodbye. Wanted to, oh, missed me. Oh, no. This big bone fist. It's the dead version of Master Hand. What have I done? Maybe I shouldn't have played on that smash at all. But, uh, since it's a new area, same things always apply. We have the same amount of treasure chests, same amount of treasures, spritelings, etc, etc. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and go to the side. I find that this switch is easily missable because you wouldn't think that you could really climb on the side right here. Because normally a lot of games tend to put invisible walls there. But, let's now go into our first dark crystal area. And it's a simple little maze. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty easy. So let's get the heck out of here now. Where's the, there's the spring going up. All right, so that takes care of that. Now, one thing to mention, you might be thinking, ah, I don't want to do those dark crystal things. Well, you are going to need dark crystals to open up the bosses of these stages. And in each world, the amount it requires for you to actually continue to go to the gold boss actually increases. So, for example, in the first world, in the first area, we only needed three. In Spooktastic World, we're going to need four. So make sure that you're getting at least four of them. And since there are eight, you have to do at least half of them. It's going to increase to five in the third area of the game, and then it'll increase to six. So keep that in mind, and please don't. Okay, good. And now you die. All right, grab the money, and you're coming with me, my good man. Now I'm going to spin you right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby. And goodbye. Auto spin really helps with these platforms right here. You need to spin while you're on them. Watch out though, because even if you're slightly in the air, if you're not careful, you'll end up doing a pile drive instead of doing a, uh, you'll do a pile drive instead of accidentally doing the corkscrew spin, which happens to me actually a lot. Right, I'm up, punch. And, as you can see, there is a Spriteling. So, yes, you can sometimes find Spritelings inside of the little Dark Crystal bonus stages. So, yeah, if you're missing a Spriteling and you haven't been going into the Dark Crystal stages, chances are it's probably inside one of those. All right, so go up over here. Switch. And I know it's possible to jump over this. I've done it before. Oh, fine. I'll just kill Crazy Hand again. Die. Annoying thing as well is that uh, the more you have to fight certain enemies that are specific to certain worlds, uh, the more health they end up getting. So, there we go. That takes care of him. And we got a swirly platform right there. So, let's grab my Wario head and go on over this way. Oops. And spin, spinny, spinny, spinny. Okay, auto spin should have taken over. There we go. And goodbye. There we go. Another gold piece. And I'm going to need one of these bone pterodactyls. Because down here is a door. And in we go. Whoop. 
Now, uh, inside right there is just going to be a piece of garlic. I think it might be some gold if you have full health like I do, but eh, it doesn't really matter because I have more than enough gold right now. All right, so let's go up over this way. Climb up. And go and get that treasure chest that's over here, which is why I'm totally going after the wrong one. There we go. Bone Pterodactyl, get over here. I need you. Get over here. There we go. I need you to open my door. You are my key. It did not look like I had hit that at all. Right? Gotta make it. There we go. There's a piece of the gold statue. Go. Uh-oh. Ah, crud. On the bright side, though, whenever you fail like I did, uh, you don't really get too much punishment. In fact, if you've actually gotten... Oh, that was my fault. If you actually have gotten both collectibles or the only collectible that's inside the area and you fall, they stay collected. So you could technically just take the spring that's back at the entrance and then continue. Right? There we go. Go up. So, for example... Since I got the dark crystal right now, if I were to fall for some odd reason and I'd end up back at the beginning, the dark crystal and the gold statue piece would have still been collected, so I could just leave at the entrance. Now, obviously, in the case of some of those dark crystal areas, it's really unnecessary, but some of them can be kind of a pain because later in the game, they get a little bit more difficult. Not too difficult, but there are... Two that I'm thinking of specifically that can go die in a fire. And ironically enough, they're both inside the fourth area of the game. Alright, let's wait for the little orb to come back. There we go. I love you, orb. Never leave me. Oh, no! I thought you had something special. Fine. Ow. Okay, that orb didn't love me. It just impaled me with spikes. Ooh, a switch. Oh, one of these things, fine. And spinny, spinny. Oh, right, I was trying to see if I could do that. Because you can actually get a double hit on these things if you do the corkscrew spin in the right way. It can be a pain to do the... What the heck? He must have still been in invincibility frames. He should have died right there. There we go. Set the bar to gold. Come here. And now you die. There we go. Bye. Now, let's go and get that Spriteling that's right there. Nope. I want to get that Spriteling because I don't want to have to do what's at the front of the mansion that's right there. All right. Going up. And now to get another one of my lovely little flying orbs. I love you. Never leave me. No! It left me again. Why does everything I love leave me? First, my gold turns into monsters trying to kill me. And now my little orbs try to leave me, too. Okay, that was way too close. There we go. Sprightling. So, that one's just giving you a tutorial. Hey, have you been uh, sucking up gold coins like you can do? Well, I hope you have. And punch this thing right here. There we go. There's one on the bottom door right there, but since I've already dealt with it, uh, the one on the top, I don't need to take care of it at all anymore. So... Yeah, that's why I usually just skip to that sprite link. All right, so go over to this side. That. And we got another one of these. Punch, punch, punch. Punch, punch, punch. Punch, there we go. Punch. And this is one's telling us about the auto spin that I've already talked about. All right, launch one of those little orbs at me because what's coming up right next? I hate my mind. There we go. Perfect. So, at the end of the hallway is a very annoying enemy. And it's one of my more hated enemies in the game because it causes a lot of damage if you're not careful. But, if you're doing what I'm doing, you can simply kill it from afar by throwing things at it, which makes it a lot easier. Pretty much, it's the same as those gold lion heads that we saw on the front of the mansion door, only these ones are silver and can fire a lot farther. I get shocked to get health, to lose health in the process. Go me. All right, now I need to get these 
for bone pterodactyls because there's another one of them that's at the edge right here. So, throw! Right. Now, where's the... There we go. There we go. You. And... Goodbye! There we go. And there's an enemy that we're never going to be seeing again that you never even saw. Yeah, those. Are, this is that's the only time in the game that you're gonna actually be seeing the gold lion heads and the silver lion heads. And I've, I don't think that there's anything that's the same equivalent of them. There are annoying enemies that you're gonna have to throw things at, but nothing like those ones. Well, there is one inside the third room. That really annoying. Hey, look at all the gold. And spin. Nope. Keep spinning. There we go. Ah, oh, missed him. All right, Mr. Triceratops. Time to die. There we go. Bye. And now pterodactyls. Nope. Get back over here. There we go. Nope. Oh, nope. Pile drive. And we're done. Luckily, though, we have more than enough gold. Even if I were to get a game over, we'd have more than enough to, you know, resume. Because for the game overs in this game, it's based on... Because uh, I've, I've talked about it before that you pay a certain amount of coins and then you just continue to where you were. There are a few things I also need to mention about that. Each world that you progress and you get farther in, the more money it will cost to bring you back at that exact area. So just keep that in mind. For example, in the first area, if I would have gotten a game over, it would have cost, I believe, 100 coins in order to bring you back. In this area, for Spooktastic World, it would take 200 coins. And that's not all. The actual... Uh, amount of hearts it restores there doesn't vary it's always the same so if i were to be revived it give me four hearts instead of the five that i have so it's a chance you have to take but you have the garlic uh dispenser's rent ah, i wanted to avoid these sharks because they're annoying hey out of my way there we go so let's go up shall we Goodbye. Love me, orb. Never leave me. I don't even know why I try anymore. Hey. I don't even know why I'm going this way, because technically I need to go down. Because... Oh. Dang it. That. Now, I need to... Ow, no. Out of my way. Alright. Oh, what the... No! You don't get on here, so you are my sacrifice! God, I hate those fish. They're annoying. Alright, and... Jump. Behold! Ice physics! And it's rare appearance in this game! I know, it's odd. It, there's not really that much ice physics in the, inside this game. Even inside the token ice world, an ice level that's inside this game, it's not that bad. I need to get a bit of health because of those stupid fish. This should be coins. I'm going to go to the dispenser. I'm not even going to go after those coins. Stupid shark fish. Nuisances. All right, so we're going to go over this way because we're going to be getting a chest. I didn't go to the one beforehand because, as you can see, we don't have the chest activated yet. But if I go to the end right here, there should be a piece of garlic. Never mind! It seems that thing is randomly generated, because normally that thing is garlic. I'd kind of like it if that thing was garlic. I need to also go right below us, because there is another one of these switches right below us. So, let's get the Spriteling that's right here. So, yikes, Brawl Doll is waiting inside the gold. It's floating in the air, so it'll be hard to punch. You should do a corkscrew conk by pressing the A during a dash attack. It's called corkscrew conk. I'm just going to call it dash, dash jump. All right, so this one requires four dark crystals in order to get to Brawl Doll, but we're not done yet. We have two more chests to grab. So, 
that will activate the chest that's right by the exit. Uh, now what I'm going to need is an enemy. I like to think that all these skeletons are all the enemies that I killed inside the first world. So, let's go up over here to the last of the dark crystal challenges. We're going to be using you. Nope, I need you to get up. There we go. All right, come with me, my good man. Because this door demands a sacrifice. And this should be the last one. This should also contain the last of the gold pieces. You gotta watch out for this one. Okay, that was close. And there we go. So, that's all the gold pieces. That's all the red diamonds. So, let's go and get the last two chests now. Over this way. Grab. There we go. Grab ourselves uh, what looks like a spot and helmet. And now let's go and grab our last treasure that is inside this stage. It should be at the end. And then I'm going to go and get some health from... I did not know that those things take one full heart. Yeesh. That's a lot. Ow. And our last treasure, an ornamental bag. So, ow. Oh, well. Well, that was my fault in its entirety. I said if I ever got a game over, that was my fault. So, on the bright side, I don't really have to pay that much to go and get full health. There's the guys right over here. So, let's punch you. The garlic. Nope. Don't want to go on the go back balloon. So, let's now go and take on Brawl Doll, which is creepy. Fitting with motif, that's for sure. Well, if you weren't creepy enough already, Brawl Doll, I'll tell you that much. Whoop! Ow! What the heck? Guess what? Whoa, stop. There we go. And same as before, hit it a few times, it gets dizzy, and then do whatever the hell you want with it to hurt it. Brawl Doll goes up there and then shoots lights at you. Now, one thing you can do is you can use these torches that are around here to hit Brawl Doll, and it will automatically stun him if I would hit him. However, it's sort of a risk versus reward on that, because as you can see, the light has now faded inside the stage. So yes, this is actually based on shadows, so it's a risk versus reward thing, which I like. I like it when bosses do that sort of thing, when games give you multiple means of taking care of a boss, but there can be consequences or benefits for doing one or the other. Great. I love how the, you know, Spriteling told me, hey, you should do the corkscrew conk. How about no, I could just punch Brawl Doll just fine, and then I can spin him around like this. Goodbye. Right, and now Brawl Doll is gonna start getting a lot faster, so watch out for that. Let's use, there we go. Oh, whoa! <laughs> that would've been bad. I wonder what happens if you actually fall inside a boss stage. I've never actually fallen inside a boss stage before. Ow! Stop that, Brawl Doll! Brawl Doll needs a spanking! I was trying to hit him into the torch, I'm not gonna lie. Whoa! That was kinda crazy. Ow! Right? There we go. And now let's end this. Now, Brawl Doll does have one more move that I did not show, and that's a charging move that he'll move back and forth. It's annoying when that happens, though, so that's why I usually don't like letting him do it. But there we go. That takes care of Horror Manor. And with one game over because I was an idiot. And there we go. 
So that takes care of the first area. And a lovely golden Wario statue for me. And a new half heart. And the second area is unlocked. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to end it off right here. This is Roxas 1359 Next time, we're going to go to the circus. See you guys next time.